Do you know the chemical formula for nitrogen monoxide? No. Correct. That's right, today we're talking about chemical formulas. Hit the theme. Ain't nothing but a chem thing, baby. Too flipped out, teachers going crazy. Lancaster is a district that pays me. Unbreakable, so please don't try to break it. But uh, back to the lecture at hand. Hello and welcome to another episode of Shu Fu coming at ya. I'm your host Fu, and with me as always is Shu. Shu know it. So everything in this lesson is pretty much the reverse of last lesson. So let's get started. Formula writing, a lesson from the formulas and equations unit. Chemical formulas. Now that we've named compounds from their chemical formulas, we will now reverse directions and write chemical formulas from IUPAC names. Remember that the subscript indicates the number of atoms of a particular element in the compound. Charges are never written in the final neutral formula. Taking a look at our example here, we have Na2SO4. We should remember that we only have two Na atoms, one sulfur atom, S, and four O, or oxygen atoms. So much like last lesson, we're gonna start with the rules for ionic first. So for ionic formulas, simple binary compounds, again, binary means that it contains only two elements. Step one, identify the compound as ionic, metal and non-metal. Step two, find the metal ion on the periodic table and write down its symbol and oxidation number. It must be positive. Step three, find the non-metal ion and write down its symbol and oxidation number. It will be the only negative value listed. Just like before, it's always that top one. Note, nitride has more than one negative oxidation state. Use negative three, it's that top one. Step four, write subscripts for each ion so that the total charge of the compound is zero. So if we were given a name involving lithium or beryllium, we'd go to those oxidation states on the periodic table, we'd see that we only have one listed, and so there's no confusion as to what to write down when we're putting together our formula. Now chlorine, on the other hand, does have multiple oxidation states, but it's a non-metal, it's gonna be listed as the second element in the name, so we just use that top negative charge when we're putting together our formula. Now we've been showing work in the past for adding up total charge. This is kind of another way of looking at it, especially for those of you who are a little bit more mathematically inclined. Use the following general formula. X subscript A with a charge of plus B, Y with a subscript of C and a charge of minus D. You will use the charges plus B and minus D to figure out subscripts A and C when you write your formula. And the mathematical formula is as follows. A times plus B, plus C times negative D equals zero. Step five, remove all oxidation numbers and write the final neutral formula with subscripts. So looking at the image below, we've got calcium with a plus two oxidation state. Now to balance that out, chlorine only has a negative one. So we would need two of them to balance out that positive two to get to zero. Binary compounds with Roman numerals. Use the same formula writing rules as before with the following exception. Step two, look at the metal's Roman numeral. This means that there is more than one oxidation number and they are specifying which one. They're telling you. Note, the Roman numeral equals the oxidation number, not the number of atoms. So maybe you struggled with Roman numerals in the last lesson when you were naming compounds. But when we're going the other way from name to chemical formula, it's actually really easy. When they give you a Roman numeral, they're giving you the charge. So for example, if you see a name with titanium two, you actually don't even have to look up titanium. You know titanium will have a charge of plus two. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna do a couple examples here. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, our first compound is aluminum chloride. So the first thing we're gonna do is look up those elements. Okay, so on the periodic table, uh, we've got aluminum. Aluminum is plus three. Good. And then the chloride would be chlorine. So chlorine, and I know it's the second element. I want that top negative charge. Good. And we know aluminum is plus three because there's only one charge. And we also see that in the example, there's no Roman numeral because it's always plus three. Oh, okay, good. All right, so I've got Al plus three, Cl 
minus one. Good, so we all know that every compound has to have an overall neutral charge or add up to zero. So we're gonna kind of balance these charges using subscripts. Okay, so I see the plus three and the minus one. So I'm thinking plus three minus three to get those to add up to zero. So I'd really only need one aluminum. So plus three times one is plus three. And for Cl, I need three minus ones to cancel out the total charge of plus three. So three on the bottom there is a subscript. So three times negative one is negative three. Those add up to zero. Good, so there's just one minor detail here. When we want to write our final answer, we don't want to have any charges. We also don't want to write the subscript one. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of simplify this to AlCl3. Perfect. All right, let's move on to the second one here. We've got iron three oxide. So we notice something a little bit different here, right? Yeah, there's a Roman numeral right next to iron. Good, and that's Roman numeral three. What does that tell us? I don't know, I get confused here. It means that either iron is plus three or there's three iron, so which Definitely one? not three iron. Oh, so okay. remember guys, the Roman numeral is always the oxidation number. Okay, so I can just go right to Fe plus three. I don't even really have to look it up. We didn't even go over the correct table, but we do need to for the other ion. All right, so let's look up oxygen. And oxygen right here is always negative two. It is, good. All right, so I've got plus three, negative two. Um, I know I want everything to add up to zero. I'm kind of thinking in terms of my math class, like a common multiple, so three and two is six, good. right? So to get plus six, I need two plus threes, because plus three times two is plus six. And for O, I need three negative twos, because negative two times three is minus six, and that adds up to zero. Good, let's just clean it up. All right, clean it up. I don't want to write those charges in the final formula. So Fe2O3, I think that should be good. That is correct. You try number one. For the following two compounds, please write out their chemical formulas. Remember, if you're not looking up their charges on your product table, you're doing it wrong. Compounds containing polyatomic ions. These compounds are not binary since they contain more than two elements. Use the same formula writing rules as before with the following exceptions. Step two, if ammonium or mercury one ions appear, use table E to obtain the formula and charge. Step three, when you see the ending H or ite, this indicates that the anion is a polyatomic ion. Use table E again to obtain the formula and charge. Note, cyanide, hydroxide, and peroxide are also polyatomic ions, despite ending in IDE. Okay, we're gonna continue with some examples. Are you ready, Fu? I am. All right, let's get started. Example one, we are going to write the chemical formula for aluminum sulfate. Okay. So let's start with aluminum. What should we do? All right, well, we gotta look things up on our pair of tables. So I'm gonna go there, and aluminum is right there. Um, it has a plus three charge. Okay, always plus three, we're good to go so, there. A-L plus three. All right, now what is special about sulfate? All right, well, sulfate, it ends in eight, A-T-E, so it's not just a single element that ends in I. Good, so, so it's not sulfur that we're looking at here. So it must be on table E as a polyatomic ion. Very good, so let's check that out. We're gonna get the formula and the charge right off of table E. Okay, so sulfate, right? A-T-E, because it looks like there's one that kind of looks like it's sulfite, so those endings, I guess, are pretty important. Yep, gotta read carefully. All right, so that's SO4 with a two minus charge. All right, so let's note that. Okay, so SO4 minus two. Now, a little tip with polyatomics, it may help to put the whole polyatomic ion in parentheses with the charge outside, so we treat it as one entity with a charge of minus two. Okay, so put the whole thing like that. Yep, looks okay. good. Let's do what we've done in the past where we get everything to add up to zero. All right, so I'm gonna use that same least common multiple thing right here with a three and a two, um, so that's six. Good. So I'm guessing plus six and minus six. Good. So I would need two of the aluminums to get to plus six. Good. And I would need three of these, but where, do I put it outside the parentheses? Good, yes, that sub subscript's going to apply to the entire polyatomic ah. ion, so that's exactly how we want to write it. Okay. 
In fact, we wanna, it helps to have those parentheses too, so we don't just multiply the negative two by the four when we're getting our total charge. The oh, whole thing okay. is minus two. Good. All right, let's write our final formula now without the charges. All right, so we've got Al2 SO4 three. Very good, let's move on to our second example. We have mercury one peroxide. Okay, so mercury one, that's mercury, that's, uh, let's see, what's the symbol for mercury? That's HG. Oh, that's a different one, okay. So HG is right there. Um, it's got two charges, but I notice it gives me a Roman numeral, so is it plus one? You would think, and again, that's what we've been teaching you thus far, that you just look at the Roman numeral, look, look at the charge. This is a special polyatomic ion, though, uh, so if, let's actually head over to table E. Okay. Table E. And if we take a look right in the upper left, there uh, actually is a polyatomic ion that involves the metal mercury. It's called mercury one, and it actually doesn't have a charge of plus one. It's HG2 plus two. Okay. All right. So it has a charge of plus two. Correct. All right. So let's write that down. So it's HG2 plus two charge. Exactly. Just like okay. any polyatomic ion, we're just not used to seeing a lot of positive polyatomic ions. Okay. All right, so what about peroxide? Well, it ends in IDE, so it must be peroxygen. There's no such element, unfortunately. So even okay. though it ends in IDE, it's actually another strange polyatomic ion. So let's okay. go to table E. Table E, ah, I see it, there we go, peroxide. All right. And it's O2 with a minus two charge. So O2 with a minus two. Good. Now, this is actually more straightforward than maybe it looks. The plus two and the minus two actually just cancel each other out and we get our formula directly. Oh, so there's no math to do here because they're already zero, right? Right, they're polyatomic ions. We're gonna leave those twos as subscripts. We're not gonna reduce or anything like that plus two minus two cancel out, and we get our final formula of HG2O2. Okay. You try number two. Please write the chemical formulas for the following names. Again, make sure you're using your periodic tables and table E. Molecular formulas. Remember, molecular means it's covalently bonded. Step one, identify the compound as molecular. It's gonna contain non-metals only. Step two, Find the first non-metal on the periodic table and write down its symbol. Use the given prefix, you can take a look at the chart, to indicate the number of atoms with a subscript in the chemical formula. Step three, find the second non-metal written with an IDE or ID ending on the periodic table and write down its symbol. Use the given prefix, see the chart, to indicate the number of atoms with a subscript in the chemical formula. Now note, you will never need to look up any oxidation numbers. The prefixes tell you what you need to know. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm gonna do a couple examples here of covalent compounds. Shu, are you ready? I'm ready. All right, good. Our first compound is sulfur hexachloride. And again, we need to figure out what type of bonding we have going on here. All right, so sulfur is a non-metal. Chloride is chlorine, which is also non-metal, so that goes with covalent molecular naming. Perfect. And honestly, just seeing one of these prefixes like hexa kind of makes me think that it's gonna be that style of naming anyway. Another dead giveaway, good. All right, so we've got those two elements. You already said what they are, so let's get their symbols down. All right, so sulfur is S, and there's no prefix on it, so I'm assuming that means there's just one of them. Good, remember we don't use mono for that first element, so if there's nothing there, it's just one. Okay, and then chloride would be Cl, and hexa is a prefix that means six, so there's six of them, so I just need a subscript of six to make SCl6. That's correct. It's really easy, I don't have to look anything up. Yeah, no charges, nothing. This is uh, pretty straightforward, those prefixes. Yeah, I like it. Okay, so you know what? This next one, dinitrogen trioxide, I'm gonna let you take the reins all by yourself here. Okay, so nitrogen is N, and then di, I know means two, so subscript of two next to nitrogen, and then oxide would be oxygen, O, and then the prefix tri means three, so I get N2O3 as my formula. I knew you could do it, good job. You try number three. Please write out the chemical formulas for the following two names. 
Well, that's going to do it for today's episode on writing chemical formulas. It's been emotional. Today's episode is brought to you by... Sludge Brick Mix. Just one box builds a two-story house. Just add cement. You just cooked it, Betty Crooked. But we never off, always zone to the brick of dawn. S-E-I-E-N-C-E in the hall, they call S-Wing. You know we never wear a tie like my homies, boys, two men. It's so hard to say goodbye. Like, like this, that, and this, and uh. It's like that, and like this, and like that, and uh. It's like this. You're going in low power mode. Plug in chill to the next episode.